things mm. that come easy and maybe when mm. they don't. Have you ever had a, a period of time or time when mm. all of a sudden you feel blocked? You feel... You look... Too many. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so when, mm. when that happens, when you feel like, you know, either dried up or you, the ideas aren't flowing or you feel stuck, what have you done to move yourself out of that phase? Because I it, cook a lot of great food. <laughs> Yes, cooking is a very good medicine for me. Reading. Mm. I read a lot. I cook a lot. Like, I like the day. I like all those. I mean, some people said that great chefs cook what they like to eat. So I would say good photographers. I wouldn't use the word great because I think it's too big. But good photographers. Photographs what they kind of like to be or what they kind of want to be help or use or what they're kind of interested in so for me the daily life like going to markets buying great food or or like all this yeah. it's obviously if i'm stuck with with creativity and i think it's, everything is going wrong i i just cook the pictures <laughs> like okay. i I cook what I would like to photograph because in that, at that very moment I'm not capable of doing it well. And obviously you have periods where you are blank. Those blank periods, reading is the answer and walking, a lot of walking and a lot of reading. Okay. It's, um, that's, like, you need... Stuff coming in. Yeah, you need stuff coming in and also you need a lot of oxygen in your head in order to to make it work because otherwise it doesn't you know and I get um, uh, I get periods where it's very difficult to make you know I imagine always you know the the mechanism of uh, of of watches I always loved when I was a kid when you when you had watches that you could sure. turn them yeah. and the and the mechanism was showing, you know, yeah. and you see those wheels that perfectly have to go, the, the teeth of the wheel have perfectly to fit one into, into the other, otherwise it wouldn't turn. And I think, I think I have the head, I have, I have one tooth stuck <laughs> when you find blank and you have to find to the way to get it going again. Yeah. It's, um, I loved the film Inside Out because of this. You know, yeah. this when you look at when you when you know when your 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 you know your your emotions. Yeah. Uh, when you can picture your emotions, and that's uh, a great idea. Inside Out was a w wonderful idea. Hmm. Do you collect anything? Uh, cameras. <laughs> <laughs> I can't sense. really resist. Well, I, I cameras or anything to do with books. I obviously books. It's. Uh, I think, uh, yes, all my money goes on film, cameras, uh, books, lots of books. I promised myself every year not to buy the big photography books, but I still do. Yeah. I just fail totally. <laughs> um. Talking about the things that inspire you, whether it's cooking mm. or or reading, who have been some of the photographers whose work has really, not necessarily inspired you, but that you've really admired and has... I can say inspired, admired, everything. <laughs> <laughs> I think there are many, because it's impossible to say one, but... A few. Give us a few. Pen, obviously. Yeah, we yeah. pen. Because I think... Um, Pen or Avedon, uh, uh, I think certain people are complete, and uh, because uh, you know, if you there are some photographers which, which are good at doing one thing. So if you like that one thing, if that one thing fully satisfies you, then that's your best iconic photography, your best, you know. In, or, or out of them all. Yeah. In, I think somebody like Erwin Penn was somebody good at doing everything because hmm. to me is the way he expressed his, uh, his um, you know, his ideas uh, into 
pictures, doing fashion and doing still life, doing you know uh, uh, reportage, doing portraits, doing you know yeah. uh, super so different. With a yeah. and it's not about style. It's really about uh, because all of us are a result of something. Obviously, pen it was similar to somebody else, and uh, but it's about really power. Uh, the the pen work is uh, stunning. It's superb. It's uh, it's difficult to you you almost find yourself speechless because you think it's so good and. A lot of his work was personally done. He did personally his, his uh, platinum printing. His he did a lot of internegatives to do his platinum printing. And he, he really inv uh, kind of invented a language to go places and interpret the place in his own way, like in all his projects to do with uh, uh, you know, walls in a small room or the famous pens corners and uh, it was just fantastic. Then Avedon, for different reasons, Avedon uh, similar to Penn, very eclectic and very complete yeah. uh, photographer but particularly Avedon is really from a, almost like from a small idea I could create, uh, I mean from a picture of his dad, he created a whole massive project of uh, a beautiful book and in, yeah. on, a, on, a, on a very simple idea like that, his, his old father. Or then, you know, there are some great, um, I don't know, some, some great, um, some great uh, early photographers that I, that I love, it's, which is like uh, Edward Curtis or uh, I just and I keep on discovering them, like yeah. uh, um, which are all now. I'm into all this this uh, early century photographs, time you know from Torbot onwards, yeah. <laughs> which are to me are fantastic simply because the uh, the discipline you needed to um, to actually take a picture that was half of the picture, if not the whole picture, because yeah. it was all about uh, understanding what you were doing fully, because you, you, really, you really entered into the same rhythm as the, as the surroundings, or what, whatever was around you, uh, whatever is around you, and it's the contrary of passing by and click, that's yeah. totally the contrary. And I, so I love the work of uh, Mark Pearson and um, uh, now I, you know, it's, it's, and then all, like most of, if not all the, the you know, the Grand Tour photographers, so all those photographers who uh, worked like between, you know, 1845 and, uh, and uh, 1900, there's one, absolutely amazing Italian photographer called Bea Felicia Beato who went like in the late 1800s in, in um, Japan and, and he took the best possible portraits of geishas, wow. of sumo wrestling, the most wonderful views of, of Japanese cities and towns and you know, going around with masses of equipment, staying in Japan for months, by the mere fact of having the courage of doing that, yeah. that in itself is great. Yeah. And then the result is fantastic. The result is stunning because it, it was it, what it needs is so much commitment that the result can only be good. You yeah. know, it's uh, you can't fail. And which nobody really, it's it's ready to take that much commitment nowadays. So the results are, are kind of never as good. And what is more to say about these early photographers is the fact that they they had very little to base themselves from, from you know, because I say Penn or Avedon 
I, I know their work kind of by memory, so obviously they influence very much me and the way I take a photo. Who influenced somebody like yeah. uh, Felice Beato in 1860? <laughs> you know? Probably only some painter. Yeah. Like those vedutisti, you know, those the viewing painters like Canalettos, you know, and, yeah. and uh, that's it. So that was really what I call it the Virgin Eye going somewhere and interpret it and seeing it for the first time. Yeah. Because those are the first views. So yeah. I don't Amazing. like the word magic, but it's more it's beyond. It's like in Italian is strepitoso. Strepitoso. <laughs> strepitoso, which is a superb word. <laughs> yes it is.